Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. If you're new, I'm Kelly. This is Kay Bella Beauty. And I just saw my friend Samantha March upload her video, which was a follow-up to the products that she wanted to try in 2018. And I was like, oh yeah, I think I filmed a video like that in the beginning of the year as well, talking about products that I wanted to try in 2018. Sure enough, I did. I will link the original video here if you're interested in like checking that out, seeing what all of the products are, maybe watching that one first, then coming back to see how I did because I have pictures of the products in that one. I'm not gonna take the time to upload pictures in this video. So check that one out if you're interested. But I decided I would go through the products that I said I wanted to try in 2018 and let you know how I did. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. As I was looking at my list, I noticed the top half of my list are products that I didn't even think too much about again in 2018, and then the bottom half, I did get to try some products out, but the first product that I mentioned was the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. That's still a foundation that I want to try. A lot of big name YouTubers rave about it, like uh, Kathleen Lights, I'm pretty sure, raved about it. Desi Perkins raved about it. And I was actually just watching Samantha Ravendahl. She posted a video and she used this foundation and she was saying that Amrezy always uses this foundation and Samantha didn't understand why she didn't look like Amra when she put that foundation on. But that kind of sparked my memory like, oh yeah, that's still a foundation that I want to try but it's really pricey so I haven't picked it up yet I actually what I need to do is I need to see if I can find it in a Sephora and get a sample of it and see how I like it uh, but I haven't I haven't been able to try this one yet still something I want to try but that might be one of those items that like stays flagged on my loves list forever just because it's really pricey I also had the Melt Rust Stack on here, and I'm pretty sure in my original video I mentioned that I wanted to try it out because I think how it's magnetized is really cool and the colors look really awesome, but part of the reason why I always hesitate with that eyeshadow palette, if that's what you want to call it, is because I definitely have those shades in my collection. Like they're really just warm toned neutral shades. I already have a ton of those in my collection, so I feel like that's kind of what always holds me back. However, I know Melt came out with a Gemini palette. My friend Jacqueline Ray really, really was excited to get her hands on that palette. It was a green palette. I know they're coming out with another palette, Smoke Obsessions, which is like greens and golds. So I still would like to try something from Melt. I haven't yet. I don't know necessarily that it will be the Rust Stack, but maybe they'll come out with another palette that catches my eye, maybe with some shades that I don't have a ton of in my collection. But that was another product I did not pick up this year. I did say that I wanted to try Fenty Beauty in 2018, and I tried one product from them. I tried their sponge. I, I'm pretty sure I did a Test It Out Tuesday video with it, so I can link that here and down below if you're interested. But that's really the only thing from Fenty Beauty that I've tried. I do want to pick up their new, what is it, the Lip Stunna Lip Paints? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I did just talk about that, I'm pretty sure, in a past grab or undecided. I do want to pick a couple of those up or at least one of them up and try those out. But otherwise, not too much from Fenty Beauty has caught my eye. Other than it being Rihanna's brand and me simply wanting to try it out, not too much has caught my eye. So I try to make up sponge. I don't know if that counts, but that's the only thing from Fenty Beauty that I used in 2018. ColourPop Pressed Eyeshadows. I still have not tried any of the ColourPop Pressed Eyeshadows. I know every now and then I go back and forth with Kathleen Light's Dream Street collab with them. Like, do I want to get it? No, don't get it. You have shades like that. Do I want to get it? No, don't get it. I don't know if I'll bite the bullet and get it one day, but I still have not tried out any of their pressed shadows. Some of their palettes have caught my eye. Some of them I've thought about getting, but for whatever reason, I just never, 
I just never went out and got it. But now that ColourPop is in Ulta, that might be something where I can actually go in store, check out the palette itself, decide if I want to get it or not. And it's a little bit easier to get because then I wouldn't have to go onto the ColourPop website, make an order, pay for shipping, yada, 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 all of that. But still, still haven't tried them out. However, I do still want to try ColourPop pressed eyeshadows. So if you have any palette recommendations from ColourPop, let me know down below because maybe that can be something that I pick up in 2019. I actually just filmed a video about makeup brands that I've forgotten about and I didn't realize that I forgot about LC Cosmetics as well. However, on my products that I wanted to try in 2018, I did have the LC Cosmetics Primer and Sponge listed down. And the reason why I wanted to try these products out are because Jaclyn Hill raved about them. And I know Jaclyn mentioned that she had dry skin and the LC Primer was super hydrating. It almost looked like like a white coconut primer type of thing. And so I was like, ooh, like I love hydration. Like that could be a product that I could try out. And then she had I want to say it was a black makeup sponge. Again, something Jaclyn Hill had raved about, and I really did want to try both of those products. But as we got into 2018, and as life happened and things happened, Elsie was a brand that completely forgot about. I feel like they don't come out with new releases a lot, so I'm not hearing people talking about them. I'm not seeing new projects coming up. So I think... When that happens, nobody's really talking about it. They aren't releasing anything new. They kind of get pushed out of my mind. So I don't know how I feel about that. I, I don't know if I really still want to try the primer and sponge. It's not something that's like at the forefront of my mind, like, oh my gosh, I want to go out and try it. But you never know. You never know what the future will bring. However, the next product... I did try, okay? We do have a success here. I put that I wanted to try one of the Flower Beauty trios with the bronzer, the highlighter, and the blush. And so I picked this one up right here. This one is the Lift and Sculpt Contouring Palette in light medium. So I think, I know I did a video with this. I think it might have been a Test It Out Tuesday. So if I can find that, I'll link it down below in case you wanna check it out. But basically, I was not blown away. The bronzer was okay. It almost has a little bit of a sheen to it, but I felt like it was showing up kind of light. I knew from the jump I was never gonna use this blush. It's just a very bubblegum pink. Wasn't a huge fan of it. And the highlighter, everybody raves about Flower Beauty highlighters but this didn't like knock my socks off. Now I do hold on to this because it is drugstore. It's something that I can use if I'm looking to do a video on drugstore makeup, but this was kind of pricey. I want to say it was in the teens, maybe 14, 15, 16 dollars, something like that, and I just didn't love it. Now I do know that people rave about their highlighter trios, so that might be something for me to try, but I did get my hands on some Flower Beauty products. I said I wanted to try them out, and I did get this bad boy here. But then we go into another product that I did not try, and that was the Morphe sponge. I guess I was into sponges. I tried a Fenty Beauty sponge. I had that I wanted to try the LC Cosmetics sponge. Again, the Morphe sponge is something that Jaclyn Hill raved about, but I know Jaclyn has kind of received some criticism or some kickback because people were saying how she's always promoting Morphe. Now it's definitely a well-known fact that Jaclyn is really close friends with Linda, the owner of Morphe, but she was always promoting Morphe. Everything was Morphe this, Morphe that, Morphe brushes, Morphe eyeshadows, Morphe sponge, Morphe everything. So I know she mentioned that she was going to try not to talk about Morphe to step back a little bit because her subscribers weren't really happy with all of that. But that is where I got the idea to try the Morphe sponge, but again, I would need to be making a larger purchase because I mean, I still would like to try it. I love beauty sponges, but um, it's like seven bucks, so I'm not going to place an order just for a $7 sponge and pay for shipping and have it come to me. So that was something I didn't try this year, and, and it's something I wouldn't be against trying, but I would just need to have 
an order to place in order for me to add that to the order basically. Now here we have some more success stories. I did say that I wanted to try the Smashbox Primerizer. This is supposed to be a primer and moisturizer in one. Now I did try, this is the smaller guy. I think it's like 15 bucks from Sephora. I did try and use a whole tube of this earlier in the year, like probably springtime shortly after I said I wanted to try it out because I have dry skin. I'm like, oh, it can be moisturizing. It's also a primer. But I remember not really loving this. It definitely gave me some moisture, but it didn't blow me away, but there was no like tack to it. The reason why I love the Too Faced Hangover RX primer is because it's super hydrating, but there's also a little bit of tack, so I'm like, oh, my foundation's gonna stick to it, and I didn't have that with this. However, so many people have continued to rave about it that as the year came to an end, I was looking to try out some new primers and I decided to give it another go and pick it up. So again, it's okay. I don't think I'm blown away by it. It's not like knocking my socks off. I'm not holy grail status with this. It's okay, but I think there's better primers out there. I also said that I wanted to try out ColourPop's concealers. Those were all the rave for a while. And I picked up two shades because these are really affordable. I wanna say maybe six or seven bucks. So I got Fair 5 and Light 20. And I did a test it out Tuesday on this, I believe. So again, I will link that down below if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, I don't really use the light 20. I can see it separating, so I'm going to shake it up for you. But um, I don't really use the light one anymore just because it's not really super brightening. This would be more of just like almost super close to my skin tone under eye concealer. And these concealers, I like them, but they do crease under my eyes. So I typically... I don't reach for the light one. However, I do reach for the fair... Oh, and you can't even see, like I've, right, I've rubbed off all of the writing I was looking for. I was looking for the writing like you have it on this one, but apparently, apparently I've rubbed it off. But I use this one every day because it is a little bit lighter. Now I do find that these oxidize, so I could use this just on its own. However, what I do is I go in with my initial concealer right now. I'm using the Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer before I was using the Urban Decay Naked Skin. And that would not be super brightening. It would be more to like conceal dark circles. And then I would go in with my fair, dab a little bit on top, blend it out, and that gives me some brightening. So I do really like this concealer. And when I use it all up, I do believe I will probably repurchase this because I like it for a little bit of a brightening effect. The next two products are both foundations. I tried them both. The first was the number seven Stay Perfect Foundation. My friend Samantha March was raving about this foundation, and I think I heard a couple other YouTubers talk about it as well. So I went into Target. I got this foundation. I have a whole review on it. I can link that down below if you're interested in checking it out, but it didn't work out for me. And I found that it wasn't the actual foundation that I didn't like, it was the shade that I didn't like. The shade that I picked out that I thought would match me the best, it was called like Warm Something, and it looked very gray toned on my skin. And the other shade that they had was more of like a cooler toned shade, so that wouldn't have really worked for me. So I tried to make it work. I remember liking the coverage and saying if the actual tint of the foundation was different, I would like it a lot more. If they come out with a wider shade range, then I would be interested in trying it again, but that didn't work out for me. Neither did the, the second foundation that I have to mention, or I guess third in this case, the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. Everybody was talking about this foundation. Raw Beauty Christy was raving about this foundation. Holy grail status for her. I went out, I picked up, I think maybe two different shades, and I'm usually pretty good at matching myself. But I found that this foundation oxidized so bad on me and made me look like super like pinky orange. It was so bad, like I couldn't even fix it with concealer. And I remember watching a video that Raw Beauty Christy was filming and I'm like, why is this foundation not working out for me? But in her video, you could see that it was oxidizing, that it was a different color and she even said, this foundation color does not match me perfectly, but I love the foundation so much, so I'm gonna keep using it. And I was like, okay, 
Well, that's good, but I have so many foundations that match me in color and that I love, so I ended up returning that one as well. And then this last product that I mentioned was the Pixi Glow Tonic, and I actually have not tried it yet. However, Pixi was very generous, and they actually sent me over some mini sample sizes of the Glow Tonic and also their Rose Toner. I just haven't opened it up and used it yet, but I'm really, really excited to try this out because I've heard some really good things about it. I know my friend Smags has mentioned that she really likes this toner, so I have given her a little mini sample size, but Pixi is definitely a brand that I want to try more from in 2019, and I'm definitely excited that, although I haven't used this yet, I was able to get my hands on the Glow Tonic in 2018 as well. But otherwise, that is going to do it for this video. That is the follow-up. These are the products that I listed that I wanted to try in 2018. Some not so good. Some I did try and they were either hit or miss. So I would love to know if you guys had products that you wanted to try and how'd you do? Like, did you actually try them out or did you try any of these products? Are there things I should be trying in 2019? And do you want to see a video in 2019 of products that I'd be interested in trying next year? Let me know down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed before you go. I post twice a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I do try to throw a third bonus video up on either Mondays or Tuesdays. So if you're subscribed, you will know when I am posting. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.